Moving on now to measurement, and I'll tell you what I'm doing up on the screen there in a second. There are a variety of ways you can measure things on an oscilloscope. You can use cursors in the X direction to measure amplitude or in the Y direction to measure time. Many scopes, including the Rigol and the Sigalent that I'm looking at here, have automatic measurements. Those measurements sometimes work on a single channel and in a few cases work on two channels, usually when you're measuring phase or delay. Uh, they often have an all measurement automatic function, which basically does all of the measurements. Now, generally the all does not include two channel. It's usually just on one channel. Don't forget that you also uh, might have a pass-fail on your scope. So uh, I'm not going to look at pass-fail. That's normally more of a production, uh, production line function. But I am going to look at the use of a math function to help you with measurements. And that's what I'm doing up here. What I've got is I've stopped the scope in the, uh, maybe this will be easier. I've stopped the scope and I have the math turned on <clears throat> with the source. Source A is channel 1, source B is channel 2. And what I'm doing is I'm just adding those two channels. Down at the bottom, you see channel 1 in yellow, channel 2 in the uh, purple or uh, I think they call it red, but it's really more of a purple. And then up above, you see the math function. And the reason that I bring this up is a lot of people are, are just never think about the fact that sometimes you can use things like the math function to tell you where you might have some problem areas. So if you look at the top screen, you'll see that it's the sum of the two at the bottom. The, areas of interest are often those little spikes. What that tells you is that there's a brief period of time when both of those channels are high. There also is uh, over here a brief period when both of these are low. Now if you look at that on the screen you might think well no those change at the same time. Well there's of course no such thing as simultaneous time. Let's look at some of the uh, math functions that the two scopes have. And most scopes these days have, uh, have algebra math, as does the Rykol and the Sigmund. Add, subtract, multiply, divide, uh, and square root. They often also have functional or calculus uh, derivative, integral, etc. In the case of the Rigol, it also has uh, log and lin, log being the base 10 and lin being base e. It also has exponential functions. In other words, you can raise e to a power. The uh, Rigol also has and, or, not uh, functions, which can be really useful, particularly if you're using the, uh, the MSO feature, that is the mixed signal feature that uh, connects there. In part because that's not, uh, I don't have a signal that has an MSO capability. I'm going to save that for maybe a future video and not in this series. But uh, those can be very useful, the, the and, or, and not uh, functions. The uh, uh, Rigol also offers an absolute function and a really useful f of x function. f of x is a uh, generic mathematical uh, operation that allows you to create uh, combinations of uh, math functions. I won't go into it here. Uh, maybe if there's somebody that really wants to look at that, I, I might uh, show them how that might be useful, but I will tell you it's a very useful function. Uh, in the FFT area, which the scopes usually put under the math function, uh, both of them have FFT. 
They both offer a split screen. They both offer cursor measurements. Uh, the windowing function, the Rigol offers six different windows, whereas the uh, Siglent uh, offers four. Uh, they both allow you to scale uh, either by dB uh, decibel or in volts uh, RMS, root mean square. I want to point out two uh, things you might want to keep in mind. When you're doing math functions, you can eliminate a lot of noise in the signal using the average acquisition mode. The reason that's important is particularly when you're using the derivative function, you really need to average your, your acquisition rather than using uh, the normal or the peak modes. And finally, you can eliminate DC error in the FFT by using AC coupling in the uh, vertical channel. So let's let's now turn to uh, the uh, math operations and I'll just show you a few of the simple ones up here on the siglent. So as I was showing earlier I have waveforms on the two input channels here and the math at the top. This is uh, a math operation of plus if we change that to uh, minus, you see what happens at the uh, to the uh, the math, which is in white, and basically you, you can sort of figure out what's going on here. It's just subtracting one from the other. Then, if we go to multiply, you see it's multiplying the two together. And finally, divide. And you see what's happening with the divide. It's really going off scale. And the reason is that when you divide a small number uh, uh, into uh, a large number, the large number gets even bigger, and it kind of drives it off scale. I'm not going to bother with this. You don't use the division operation that often. Uh, but one thing that I'm going to skip the FFT for now and go straight to the integral function. And the reason I'm going to go to that is, in this case, the source is channel 1. So that's the, the yellow. One place where this, this uh, integral function can be, uh, can be useful is in, uh, if you will, predicting the output of, say, an op-amp in slew mode. Now, you can actually measure the output of an op-amp in slew mode by hooking one of the channels up and doing the derivative uh, of the output. So if you have the input on one channel, the output on another channel, and you do the derivative of the, uh, uh, of the output, the, that will actually give you the slew rate in volts per microsecond or volts per second, uh, etc. So those are, those are some of the useful functions for the uh, math operations. Now I'm going to stop at this point on the siglent and, uh, uh, and then when we get to the Rigol we'll, we'll look at some of the additional math operations.